we know that uh, esports is gaining in popularity, gaining in popularity, gaining in popularity. Mm-hmm. Um, so much so that networks are starting to pick it up, and it's it's making it to major news feeds and stuff like that. And it's probably at the most popular it's ever been now. So much so that people have been wondering, is there ever going to be an ESPN of esports? And yes. the answer is yes. The ESPN of esports is ESPN. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, ESPN Boom. itself. Yeah, <laughs> ESPN itself is deciding that part of espn.com will be dedicated to esports, mm-hmm. which um is that a big deal. That vertical is up right now. It like it launched a launched a couple days ago, I believe. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And so they say in the first week the content will include news on the current and future esports, off-season grades, look back in the past season of multiple league championships around the world and profiles on gamers who have influenced the meteoric rise of esports. This is this is the year. I, I have a feeling that this is like the beginning of esports going mainstream almost. ES, uh, ESPN, ESPN is as mainstream as it gets, though. Yeah, yeah. In terms of like a sports landscape in North America, yep. ESPN is king. There's nobody who's even remotely close to that. And I'm including the networks but, that we're on in here in Canada. Like, yeah. I, I mean, obviously we have a love for Sportsnet. We're on Sportsnet, um, and Sportsnet's huge in Canada. But I mean, in terms of like. A global spectrum, global coverage. Yeah, even I'm not, not even just North America. Globally, ESPN yeah. is the number one sports network, and if they're putting a portion of ESPN.com, which I'm sure is one of the most high traffic sports sites, dedicated to esports, that's mainstream. Yep. Yeah. And this, these, are, this is the year of big moves. We had Activision Blizzard purchasing Major League Gaming for like forty six million dollars, and right. then in that announced that they'll probably do partnerships with TV and everything. And and when that came out, the headlines were. Activision Blizzard wants to be the ESPN of esports, <laughs> and now it's been ruined because Too the late, ESPN suckers. is going to be the ESPN feel, of esports. I really right? hope that there was somebody high in the towers in Bristol, Connecticut, where uh, ESPN is located, in like a giant Iron Throne chair. So yeah. just saw Activision say this said, and just like sat back and was like, "Really?" <laughs> and just like put in a call and it's like. Create an esports network. Yeah. Post haste. Now. So, so you're saying the president of ESPN is, is Tywin Lannister? Yes. Is, is, exactly. is that what you're saying right now? That's exactly what I'm saying. It could be Mr. Burns. <laughs> In the Mr. gaming Burns world, had a chair like I that. was picturing more of a Mr. Burns type. Yeah. In the gaming world, he kind of is. The CEO <laughs> of ESPN, like a year ago or two years ago, said that he didn't want to cover esports. Yeah. That esports isn't sports, it's competition, kind of like checkers and chess. And so he's he was only interested in covering real sports. Backtrack. But now doesn't, doesn't ESPN? Did they had poker on their networks. Yep. Right. Yeah, yeah, like, I know. What the heck it's is that? The exact same. If you, if you have if you have to if you have to have filler, let's face it, poker's on television because they just need something to throw on television and it's cheap in between games I mean, and it's during, cheap during they the could NHL do that lockout, poker yeah. was like everything yeah, it's very cheap programming <laughs> yeah. to produce i'd rather watch esports than that just Me throw too. esports on there instead of poker now that being said poker let's say 5 years ago was yeah, insanely it was huge. popular it was on yeah TV, because of the online poker stuff and it's fizzled out yeah. but i think the difference is that poker Five years ago and poker today are still the exact same game. Nothing has changed. Yes. Whereas esports, everything changes. Dif- yeah, and it's always different games. Whether yep. it's Dota Two or yep. Counter Strike yep. or whatever it is, and even if it is Counter Strike, the Counter Strike they were playing five years ago is not the Counter Strike they're playing today. Right. Exactly. This, this is CS:GO. Right. And uh, there's always there's always patches, right? Right. And so it's different. So I think there is a lot of room for growth. Yes. And a lot of room for stability. Fresh content. We'll have to see whether it maintains its popularity five or ten years from now, but I think it will. You, you, you talk about how it's constantly changing. I think that will probably be the greatest challenge to kind to permeate, to truly permeate into the mainstream mm-hmm. like mindset, right? Because games, particularly competitive games, they're patched all the time because people always crime nerf this this is too op buff this this is this is garbage right here yeah. so for example the most popular game in the world league each season something changes mm-hmm. so how do you get that across to an audience where like for the most part you know like football like there there are changes in the rules like for example they're like what a, what a uh, what uh, is a pass or what constitutes a catch mm-hmm. changes every single year in football right but you know the general concept of football Sick. remains the same. Yeah. But in league, you know, like any minuscule change to like a to a certain character can change the entire entire meta of right. the game. But the but the right? game itself is still the same. Like the ultimate goal in League of Legends 
Well, I, won't I change. So, yeah. Just like the ultimate goal of football is to get touchdowns and field goals, like to score points. I thought it was I, to do a little dance. Yeah, and to do a dance <laughs> after. No, but now you get penalized for that. that. Oh, but, that's um, you get the extra points, yeah. though. You get six for a touchdown, and then depending on your dance, the judges hold up scores at the end, and then I, you get more. I don't and you know. Feel I, fancy flags. Yeah, yeah right? that's right. I, I don't know if I don't know if, uh, I don't know if something like, as simple as patches would really affect a fan base in the same way that every time I watch football, I'm always learning a new rule. But like, think- every single game <laughs> I watch, there's like, oh, yeah, well, you can't do that. And you're like, well, why not? And then, well, we'll get the sideline guy to explain it to you because you didn't know about the rule. The, the, the problem with eSports is that new games that get introduced with no fan base or with limited fan base that gets introduced and pushed, will that end up killing, you know, me- yeah. uh, media coverage of, of eSports in general? Well, the only uh, kind of issue I've taken with uh, with this ESPN vertical, because, like, I've been, I've been, like, on it every single day since it's mm-hmm. launched, because I'm very interested in, like, competitive in competitive video games. But, like, uh, as, as a big uh, fighting game fan, as a, as a proud FGC member, mm-hmm. um, I was, like, really disappointed that they didn't have anything to do with Street Fighter. Because like Capcom has its own official league, similar to the way League has LCS, yeah, and Dota has its official league as well, right? So it's called the Capcom Pro Tour. Street Fighter Five is launching, you know, in just uh, about a month from now, mm-hmm. and um, that's going to be pushed into a huge tournament scene. I probably have a bias here, but to me, like fighting games are just like so much more inherently easy to understand. Yes. It's like you see yeah. a life bar, yeah, right, and, and see like the oh, this yeah. guy's just smacking the hell yep. out of this guy. I- and I totally agree with you. I think if any of the video games are going to make it into the mainstream in terms of an esports to a general audience, it is a fighting game. Yeah. It is like a Street boxing, Fighter or a Mortal yes. Kombat or a Soul yeah. Calibur or whatever it is you pick. Yeah. Be- right, because it's boxing, because it's easy to understand, because visually it's spectacular. Like if somebody pulls off a crazy move in Dota 2 – to it's, the general public, it uh, you can like, oh, whoa, what you happened? You can miss it, right? You can <laughs> miss it. You won't, you won't understand. Even with CSGO, even if it's a great kill, it's very hard as a common person to distinguish between what that is and what a regular kill right. is. But, but, in, but in Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat, if somebody pulls off an amazing move and like is it's gruesome and brutal... I think even the general public is like, oh my god, that was pretty awesome. Yeah, or like whatever. If, if you see like a like a twenty hit combo mm. that does you know fifty sixty percent damage, and you just see that life bar just evaporate, yeah. mm-hmm. right? People are like, oh man, that's that's really cool. Or if somebody right? makes a crazy comeback where they're down to like a little bit of life yeah. left, yeah. and then somebody makes a crazy comeback. So yeah, I think that's more tailored to a general audience, yes. and that's really the trick here is they're going to have to find a way to keep catering to the audience that they want, which is the people who play in these tournaments, play yeah. these games, gamers, but try to permeate some sort of audience with the general public as well. But, 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 that, same, but that same vein, though, I think the reason why they're, they're going after like the league crowd and the CS crowd, Dota, Hearthstone, is because like this is where the largest player base, like yeah. these are the most popular yeah, that's exactly games why. in Cap- the entire world. Yeah, the right? Capcom... Tournaments don't fill basketball stadiums. No, I mean no, we MOBAs do. We we talked to a few people from the international the last couple of years. Yeah, they sell out an entire twenty thousand seat arena exactly. for that. And that's exactly arena. why yeah, it's on the, the website. Sony that's exactly play. why they're yeah. covering. Right? So I mean, uh, until fighting games like Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter get that popular, it's not going to get the same coverage I mean, that for, CS:GO will get, for, or that you know. Th- there was one event. I mean, like you kind of saw it last year, like uh, at, like Evolution, right? Mm-hmm, yeah. Like Ev- Evolution is the biggest tournament in the world. It's held in Vegas every year. Mm-hmm. I'm probably going this year to to play in it again. But um, for Street Fighter Five, I think I think they can expect numbers of upwards of like 2,500 people plus just participating in this one game. Mm-hmm. And that's that's another thing that's kind of great about fighting game tournaments. These are like official leagues for for these other games. But for fighting games, even though you're playing with the guys who are pros, right, like you actual pros, yeah. but like anyone off the street can just put down their their ten dollar entrance fee, yeah. and I'm gonna I'm gonna enter this tournament. Anyone can throw down. Anyone can enter. Anyone has the potential to win. Now, if you're a complete novice, there's a chance you're just gonna go o two and you know like feel sad. But to, like it's, it's, it's there compete. isn't that barrier to entry which is huge because you know you and I love basketball we're not, but we're not walking onto the court challenging LeBron to a game you know what I mean we're not you yeah. can't do that whereas the LeBron of Street Fighter could be out there and you could conceivably enter the same tournament as him yep. which is similar to poker you know like a, any Joe Schmo off the street can enter a poker tournament mm-hmm. and try to get their way up there yeah i mean like i i have entered street fighter tournaments where like oh look there's a uh, like one of the greatest players of all time uh, Daigo Umehara 
and I was in the same tournament as him. I wasn't in the same pool as him, but like I was in the same tournament as him. Right. And I ended up going like three two in the tournament, and he ended up making top eight. And there were like eighteen hundred people in this tournament. Yeah. So, <laughs> one of the things that will tell us how popular this becomes is if you see the best players in in esports. Starting to wear NASCAR style like jackets with all the sponsorship on it, yeah. and doing endorsement deals and commercials. I'm sure some of that exists already in Korea. In Korea, in Korea, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure in South Korea, players. It's there. Yeah, if it starts to make its way over here, where you see, and I remember a few years ago there was a guy who did have like a deal with Intel, and and uh, you know he was out there and he got fatality, a certain, yeah, fatality, yeah, fatality yeah. Was, was like he was Counter Strike. He, he, he was like the first like kind of big uh, mainstreamy big guy in North America, guy, like, and he was. I used to play uh, Quake 3 Team Arena, and that's how I got to know him. And yeah. I like, was watching his videos all the time. And there wasn't YouTube back then, so I had to actually download those like MP4 mm-hmm. MOV files to, and just watch his gameplay. I was like, man, I can never do this. Like, This guy's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah and that's how, that, that's how he got famous. And then he got like his own... Didn't he get his own NVIDIA graphics card or something like that? Yeah, yeah. And, and now he's... like I don't think he plays anymore, but I think he has a Twitch stream, and he yes, just kind of helps you out with your how to optimize your rig basically. Yeah. We'll probably see more of that here, but I think it'll take some time in North America because our society isn't as entrenched in this kind of video game world no, as not. South Korea is. And and sadly or Europe. Sadly, you know, or Christine, Europe. you you brought this up with uh, when we had Victor Lucas on a few weeks ago, but how there is still a mentality surrounding video games uh, in the general public that it's nerds and people who live in their parents' basement or just and for children all that kind of stuff or it's for children. When obviously that has changed, if you're inside the video game world, you know that's very different and it's very, yeah. you know, it's not the same, but that, that sort of mentality or, or negative stigma exists around it for some reason, which mm-hmm. is kind of a bummer because it's not, that's not what it is at all anymore. No. But I we'll think see that change we'll also see, um, wasn't it last year that Colin Cowherd from ESPN said that he would like never talk about esports and he like yes. went on a whole rant about and, how terrible and, yeah. it is. And, and ever and... since, uh, he, uh, I think he either left or he was fired from ESPN. He's now at Fox Sports. Oh. Just uh, trolling, so it, listening to him. Just trolling <laughs> it up over there, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Trolls on Fox? What are you talking about? <laughs> that doesn't sound right. But, you know, now now ESPN has like obviously gone full tilt into it. So we'll see whether this esports conversation makes it on the air onto like ESPN Radio or even yeah. the fan here, aside from Marshall, uh, or you know, on Sportsnet, yeah. or on on other networks. Whether... ESPN three has aired some games in the past in the states. And they they're they're airing like a, this is the first weekend for LCS. Yeah, I'm pretty sure ESPN three is airing it. As soon as ESPN esports came out with their Twitter account, their Facebook account. I immediately followed. You know, I follow a lot of ESPN accounts, and they're not like trying to be secondhand with this. Mm-hmm. They're treating this like any other official news source. You know, they, so they really Good. do want to be the. Be. Yep. They really do want to be the worldwide leader in this department. So, like all those other like niche esports websites, like look out because they're going to crush you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad they're taking it that seriously, and then hopefully they put people in charge of these things that are in tune with that world and know what they're doing. They ran a story like on uh, Outside the Lines with Bob Lay. Which is a great on, show. On uh, already like, PEDs within esports. They had this entire package ready it's for ready this launch. Yeah. It was really impressive. I can't wait till the day that we see esports highlights on SportsCenter. Yeah. That's, that'd be cool. That's yeah, going to be the I, I work I work at Sports. That's when you know we've made it. I'm already trying to <laughs> connect it. You want to I'm, see I'm, I'm 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 already trying to convince my boss, you know, we should launch like an esports vertical and uh you just just hire me on as as the guy, give me a raise. The, the raise is really the part I was going <laughs> after.